Welcome back to another episode of The Road Shows Me. My name's Dan, and on today's episode, the build of my Overland Jeep Camper continues. I've got a bunch of stuff to show you today. Namely, we need to fabricate the fiberglass piece that bonds the Jeep to the camper. I need to show you how I installed the snorkel, hopefully drilling a hole in the right spot. We need to bond in the forward floor, one of the wheel wells. We've got a ton of stuff to get done in this week's episode. So let's get into it right now. The build of the Dream Overland Jeep Camper continues. To start off, we need to fabricate a piece to bridge the Jeep and the camper. It needs to flex a little bit, but it also needs to be watertight to make sure that this will be a permanent bond. And this is where Michael's skills of fiberglass come in handy. On the table here, you can see a mold that he made when he made this piece for his Jeep. He made this by splashing directly onto his Jeep and camper. Once he had the mold, now he can make parts off of the mold, which is what we're going to see here. As he lays up fiberglass onto that piece, hitting it with resin to make the fiberglass harden. You can see this process takes a long time. And every now and again, I show up in the frame to ask Michael questions about fiberglassing. I've never worked with it before, and it's an incredible way to learn what it's all about. The amount of prep and effort that's gone into making this mold is absolutely incredible, and it's great to learn from. We'll set that piece aside while it dries and come back to it later this episode. If you remember last episode during the test drive, the rear parking sensors and the trailer plug weren't connected, so it's time to do that. I basically just need to extend the existing wires, solder them all and heat shrink them with the dual wall waterproof heatsink and then solder all those connections on the inside as well. Fingers crossed, I'm getting close to the last of the wiring. With all of that rear wiring complete, we can now bond in the forward floor section. And you can see here, this is after it's already been prepped. We've scuffed it, prepped it with alcohol and wiped it down with activator so it's actually ready to put in. Here we are putting the glue on the actual surfaces. Again, this is that tricky stuff from Germany, and here it is, Cora Pop or 422. It's kind of magic stuff for composites. With the forward floor bonded in, we can now also bond in one of the wheel wells. For now, we'll do the passenger side. We'll get to the driver's side a bit later on. And you might remember, Michael made these out of carbon fiber, just like all the other composites in this project, we need to carefully prepare it for bonding by scuffing it up, cleaning it with alcohol, hitting it with activator, and then we can bond it in with our special glue. Again, this is amazing. There are no bolts holding this together. It's all glue. While we wait for all the glue and fiberglass to dry, it's time to switch gears a little bit and install the AEV snorkel. And a couple of things to mention here, I filmed a video in detail about how I did this on my Gladiator. So I'll throw a link up there in the top corner. If you wanna see every step in detail, you'll see it there in that video. Here today, I'm just gonna give you the cliff notes and go through it pretty quickly. The other thing you might notice is that this is a bit out of sequence. I actually installed the snorkel before we even started on the camper conversion. So here the video footage, I've filmed a lot and some of this footage comes from working on Michael's Jeep and building parts for his, some of it's from my Jeep and some of it's out of sequence because we were doing bits and pieces of about 15 jobs at the same time. And so what I wanna show you guys is each part from beginning to end rather than constantly jumping back and forward like we actually did in real life. So you might see the odd clip out of sequence, but I assure you, these jobs were all done, and I'm going to show you every job that we did do. So this snorkel is from American Expedition Vehicles, and as far as I'm aware, they're the only company offering a snorkel for the Eco Diesel Wrangler and Gladiator. And that's because the air intake is on the opposite side. It's actually on the driver's side. And the snorkel here, it is essentially the same as for the 3.6 litre gas engine. It's just on the opposite side. That really is the difference. Everything is mirrored. And you can bet your bottom dollar I measured a bunch of times before cutting and drilling these holes. 
But amazingly, this is now the fourth time I've done this, so I should be pretty good at it by now. And I was fairly confident I got it in the right spot and that everything came together as it was supposed to. Not only does the snorkel look incredible, it is definitely going to keep water and dust out of my engine. And I know these things are a bit controversial, but for me, for where I go on the planet, I would never consider having an expedition vehicle without a raised air intake and that dust pre-filter. It just isn't worth it. When I'm thousands of miles from home and spare parts, this is just a great insurance policy to make sure that I don't destroy my engine in the middle of nowhere. Now that the B-pillar piece has cured for a couple of days, it's time to pop it off the mold and trim it to size. So this is actually the final piece here that Michael is trimming, and the green stuff on it, that's just mold release. He's just leaving that on for right now while we're working with it, so that we don't scratch it or damage it. And we needed to do a couple of test fits to make sure that it goes on cleanly and it sits exactly where we want it to. Given that this was molded off Michael's Jeep, the fit is absolutely perfect. It is incredible the level of detail on this custom molded fiberglass piece. Once Michael was happy with how it sat, it was time to prepare to actually bond it on. So the first thing was to mask up around the edges of it everywhere that it was going to sit. This helps me know where to scuff and it'll make it easier to make a nice bead with the edge of the glue later. And again, it's time to do all of the sanding and all of the prep for another composite bond. So we start out with fairly fine sandpaper, knock the shine off all of the surfaces, and then use a very coarse sandpaper to kind of scratch right in deep so the glue will have something to grab onto. After that, we wipe it down with alcohol and then the special primer. And yes, right now I am using sandpaper on the original Jeep paint. It feels pretty strange to do that, especially when I was scratching in really deep, but it all is okay because this will be entirely covered and nobody will ever see it. This is all just part of the bond prep. We have to do this same preparation on all the surfaces that are going to be bonded. So this includes the front wall of the habitat and even the top of the original Jeep Freedom panels. This stuff's just fiberglass anyway, so it's easy to scratch into it and scuff it up so that the glue will really bond to it. It's really warming up in Michael's shop, so we're not going to have a whole lot of time before the glue starts curing. Once we think we've got everything ready, Michael starts laying down glue and I prepare everything else I can. My job is to smooth out the glue as much as possible to make sure there'll be no air bubbles. And I even use a little trowel to scrape lines in it to help those air bubbles escape. Now you can see we've put the final part in place and it's just a matter of finessing it exactly where we want it to sit and being gentle to the glue. You can see Michael has painted the part gloss white and it is absolutely flawless on the surface. This thing is just going to disappear into the front wall of the Jeep. We used a lot of glue because we really want to make sure this is a strong bond, but also that it's very much watertight up here on the roof. So our next step is to use a little trowel to scrape off all the excess glue we possibly can. And this is where the masking tape comes in super handy. All that excess is just going on the tape, which is not causing any trouble at all. After tons of cleaning and wiping and getting glue all over our fingers, all that's left to do is peel back the masking tape and see that we've got an incredible fillet of glue right on the edge of the part. It pretty much does just disappear and you can't even see where the join actually is. With some more spot cleanup, we're all done and the new custom molded fiberglass piece is permanently bonded to join the Jeep onto the camper. We really want to make sure this glue dries well and that things don't flex around so we're not going to get inside the back of the camper or in the cab of the Jeep for at least a couple of days just to make sure everything cures really well. And here is the finished product. I think it looks incredible and just vanishes. It basically looks like it was always supposed to be there. So there you have it, a whole bunch more jobs completed on the Jeep camper. 
And I wanted to address a question that I'm getting a lot. People are asking, is Michael gonna put more of these into production? And the answer is right now, he doesn't know. Basically these first two, mine and Michael's, these are prototypes and they're designed to evaluate and test whether or not this is a good idea to put into production. Is the interior living space big enough? Are they durable enough? Are they up to the task? Does the Jeep carry the weight? Are they nice to drive on road? All of those things, the reason that Michael built two of them is so that we can evaluate that, we can determine that, and then long-term, Michael will figure out if he wants to put this into production, if he wants to improve it or modify it a bit and build something similar, or if in fact he just moves over to a totally different thing. Who knows, Michael's a mad scientist. He could be cooking up anything right now. I don't even know what he's up to. But if you want to follow along, Michael is Wabi Sabi Overland on Instagram, and he literally is mad scientist genius. He is always cooking up something. So follow along if you want more details on how this was built, his previous vehicles, and whatever he's gonna get up to next. And speaking of next, on the next episode, now that we've bonded the camper to the Jeep, it's opened up a bunch more work that I can show you. I need to show you how Michael designed and mounted the roof rack onto the freedom panels. Quite an ingenious system. I'll probably show you the front bumper. I might show you the suspension. There's the other wheel well, the fuel filler. We better hurry up and start manufacturing the roof. There's tons more to go on the build. So I hope you'll stick around for next time when we get into all of that. And until then, I need to say a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. They're making all of this possible and they're getting behind the scenes access. They've got details on all of this from a long time ago. They get early access to the videos. We're already designing and laying out the interior together. All of that is available to my supporters over on Patreon. So if you wanna check that out, there's a link down in the description. You can jump over there. But other than that, thanks again for watching very much. If you've got any questions about the Jeep Camper at all, let me know down in the comments. I'm always happy to reply, always happy to film those details on an upcoming video. But until next time, have fun out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.